Hi folks, welcome to this week's track guide in the F4 at Fuji no chicane, so let's crack on with it. Right then, fast lap done and dusted, and let me show you everything. The rules tab, always read the rules tab because it will show you where the off tracks are. So that is crucial for maximizing your track limits and then minimizing your lap time around the circuit as well. Info tab for you. Now, I don't have the setup, but I'll put a screenshot above me to prove that I did. This was on the iRacing fixed Fuji setup. Track temp of 71 Fahrenheit and a moderate use of 44%. The reason I have to record this again is because the sound mucked up, so that's the reason why. Anyway, the lap I'm going to show you is actually my last lap, and there's a few reasons. I've got to get rid of me head first it's the last lap uh sorry no not the last lap lap 16 i'm showing you which is there so 136 441 now end of the stint there up there i did a 36 2 and then i came out for a few more laps with a full tank and some fresh tires got down into 36 twos again but i'm going to show you my second lap which is a little bit cleaner and a little bit more sort of race pace relevant i think which is a 36 441 as mentioned so yeah that's the lap i'm going to show you but otherwise i think it, i like fuji i i expect this to be quite quiet because it was last season with the chicane this layout is better in my opinion it's going to be a little bit better for racing and that straight down that that main straight it literally takes about 28 seconds to get down there it's stupid and last season the slipstream wasn't particularly powerful it was good to keep you in the toe and then because the straight is that long you pull out and then you both sort of hit v max and you both sort of go down the straight like that like that because you're neck and neck it's yeah it, it's it's one of the things like the slipstream isn't beneficial enough over the car in front because the car in front's had time to get up to top speed Anyway, so yeah, racing could be interesting around here. Be careful of this turn here. If you run wide, it will be considered death. And uh, yeah, you will you rule one ride and have a spin, so be cautious. Turn one's always a tricky one around here, particularly at the long straight. People die bombing and thinking they're better than they actually are. So be cautious around there. Otherwise, yeah, I quite like Fuji. I expect it to be quite quiet, but yeah, I do quite like Fuji. Otherwise, what's above my head? The Discord, where the OLAP, BLAP, Telemetry replay file will all be in there. And I also use Garage61, which is a website to view view telemetry and also uh, sort of compare lap times so i use that as well not affiliated with them or anything and it's free to join so the link's downstairs for the website and obviously to join my team so you can have a look at my sessions you can have a look at all my sessions technically because it runs a little program on your on your uh, on your pc to ship them the telemetry files um but yeah otherwise i think that's done and dusted so let's crack on with the breakdown lap Right then, Fuji, got to be one of the longest uh, straights on the entire uh, iRacing service, apart from the Le Mans without chicanes, that's probably the only one that beat it. But anyway, looking down here into turn one, we are looking for the curbing there on the left-hand side. Just before it starts, you want to brake and then nip a tyre onto it as well to truly, uh, really try and open up turn one. Be easy through here, I do miss the apex light, you want to try and kill that bollard, try and run over it with your inside tyre, you'll always understand why, but be careful about running wide here, there's a little bit of a bump as you go over onto that other curbing, so be careful about that. And there is an off track as well, so be cautious. Turn two is is gone. This is turn three, so we're breaking at the 50 meter board, and you can keep it in fifth. But if you want to drop it down to fourth, you can absolutely clip that uh, that bollard thing completely flat on it. That'll be absolutely fine. And be careful again, running wide. There's an RC bump there on exit, and you can also get an off track if you go too far wide. So be cautious. Round here, keep on the sort of 
dark patch and then at this point start lifting off as the car drifts out because you want to cut back for this apex right here try and get over there i didn't find an off track out there so it's quite nice because it leaves you quite nicely set up for the awkward left hander here now just at the dark patch on the cut on the wall there on the right hand side brake nice and easy through here third gear make sure you try and get close to that yellow sausage curb but do not touch it it will send you into oblivion and then be careful on exit as well because you want to get a nice smooth transition of throttle through there very easy to spin there so be cautious it's downhill so the car doesn't like it too much through here you're just trying to minimize the steering angle here just trying to maximize your straight line and this is where the track improves enormously because we're braking all the way down here so the last third dunlop marker or the 50 board brake nice and easy fourth gear very fast corner this get close to the curb but don't get the uh, inner curb because it will send you into oblivion again and then watch the red curb because you will spin out and hit that wall on the right hand side ask me how i know the grass where the concrete concrete starts that's where you want to start breaking for this one nice and easy nice and gentle keep the car neutral through here again try and get close to that bollard and try and be careful of the understeer because them sausage curbs are a real pain in the rear end so watch out for them let the car drift out naturally and then as you start to see that sort of marshall post over there start applying the brakes let the car drift out and this is really a blind entry corner third gear again nice and neutral over the apex be careful of the snap oversteer right there because them yellow sausage curbs will come out and bite you again. You're sensing a theme with the sausage curbs here, so be warned. That little white marker over there, just so we can start to see it, break, straighten up the car a little bit. Try and open up this last corner as much as possible. You want to apex after the yellow sausage curb and get on full throttle as early as you can because you're going to carry all that extra speed for about 28 seconds now all the way down into turn one. You're full throttle for a massive amount of time. Considering it's almost half a minute that you're full throttle and the lap time is only in sort of the one minute thirties anyway, this is crucial getting that corner right. It is so critical to lap time to get a good exit. But that's us across the line in a 136.441. As mentioned, I did go a little bit faster in practice, but I think that's the, probably the uh, a decent lap with a few mistakes in there as well because I like showing you them so you don't have to make the mistakes that I do. And it warns you about how the car's going to react as well. Otherwise, if this did help you out, don't forget to like and subscribe to that lovely YouTube stuff, and I will catch you on the next one. <laughs>